Well, hello everyone, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo T.A. Wrap, where we take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective. Each time we ask ourselves just one question, what happened today, what does it tell us about the coming ones? I do the show four times a week, and every Monday through Thursday, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. It's archived on YouTube under the channel L.A. Little. You can subscribe just up on the right-hand corner of YouTube. Subscribe, get content uh, notification anytime content is pushed. Also do a show on Sunday. It's more of a broader weekly view where we're asking the same questions, but on a larger scale, a longer term time frame. As far as uh, the time frame of this market, it is all about now. These markets just keep climbing, and we actually saw a good thing in my opinion. And that is, is we saw a uh, uh, pullback. Well, it actually didn't pull back, but it didn't sky high again uh, in the NDX, right? So the NDX, 1.5 uh, points higher, 0 0.03. That wasn't the leader. What was the leader? Well, it was the listed issues, which is exactly where it needs to be right now. The S&P 500, the uh, Dow Jones, pushing higher, and... Uh, giving us that push, that rotation that is so sorely needed to make this market go higher. TLT, big move in it, 1.3% yelling up on the street today. She more or less said that, uh, you know, we're not going to raise those rates anytime soon. And uh, that put a bid back underneath the bonds, it looks like. And uh, that was probably the biggest movers out there. But the key to me was this, right? These guys still going up not giving it up and starting to rotate. If we take a look at the charts themselves, you can see it here on the S&P 500, a little bit more volume, pushing higher, pushing up towards those targets. I've talked about those targets before. Uh, we can do the math on them here in a second, but it basically it's this ABCD structure that's in place, and we're pushing up to try to fulfill that structure. If you take the bottom, you know, just a, a simple calculation, you got 1981 roughly on the bottom. You've got this uh, 2072 up here, so you got about 90 points or so. Uh, and then you add it onto this, that gets you about 2031, 2032. So 2032 is the target. Where are we at? 20, uh, excuse me, 2132. We're at 2118 roughly at the high. So we're only about 14 points away from that target. Not that far to go, right? And it keeps pushing, keeps pushing up there. The thing you have to recognize now is we are moving into that territory where the odds of some sort of a pullback start to increase. And what I mean by that is we've, we've gone over this, right? We got over this and we got those long tails and now we got the push up off of that. We, we can get another retrace back into this retest regenerate zone at any point. But it's not here that we would probably see the, the action to the downside. It's on the more extended sectors or indexes, and we'll look at those here in a second. But you know, just be aware that as we push and push and push, you're going to have a higher probability of some sort of uh, at least sideways movement, which is what we're starting to see already in the NDX and potentially some sort of a pullback. Let's look at that NDX since we're talking about it. The, the, the deal here is Apple. You know, Apple has taken this market quite a bit higher, won't let it fall, and Apple continued to do what Apple has done, and that is, is it keeps hanging up there. If I pull over the Apple chart, you can see what I'm talking about. It gets over, back under, but it has slightly more volume, so that says Apple's going to continue to hang up here. So as long as Apple hangs, the NDX can hang. Uh, because Apple's the biggest weighting in there, the other big cap tech stocks are not killing themselves, and the socks actually took off today. So you kind of have everything happening uh, to keep this thing gyrating and uh, you know ha hanging up here. But we know that it's overextended. And when you're overextended, it gets harder and harder to keep pushing north. That overextension was from about there, so you can see it's already pushed past it. If you look at this NASDAQ, or actually in this case the NDX from one other perspective, look at your highs. From this low, you got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, and now ten days straight up. Folks, you can't keep going straight up each and every day. And I know it's little bitty straight ups on the way. You know, like today was just barely over yesterday, which was just barely over Friday, and the same thing last week. But that's not much of a pause. That's a stretch, a stretch, and a continued stretch. And as I've said, a lot of that is about Apple. Uh, but, uh, you know, you've got other things that are helping it. For example, I was just talking about the socks. You can see the socks pushing up today. Uh, that's putting some juice into this. Socks got the consolidation here. So the socks had done the ABCD up. It's the consolidation, and now it's starting to leg up again. And that's another, you know, good third of that index. So I don't see this index crashing, but I do see this index, at least at this point, saying, hey, I'm pretty tired. I want to try to take a break. And when you see that, that should tell you as an investor, you don't want to try to keep pushing as hard in terms of entries in the stretched sector or in the stretched index, whichever it may be. If we look here at the composite, it's doing the same sort of thing. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days here straight up. So exactly the same sort of setup that makes it very hard to keep going up. Russell. The Russell also is getting a pretty good stretch. Uh, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight straight days up. So I think you catch my drift. The drift here and what I'm trying to say is, hey, don't be surprised if you get a pullback at any point now. And that's because this thing has gone, you know, straight up, right? Day after day after day. And when I'm talking about a pullback, you know, I, I'm not saying that we have to get, you know, for example, I'm not saying we have to get a pullback way back to here somewhere. You know, it might be just, you know, half a percent or a quarter percent, but something instead of closing up, right? It doesn't, it, it's going to take some sort of a, the way here, let me say it a different way. The way these things usually work, okay, and let's go back to the one of the most stretched ones. Let's look at the NDX. The way this usually works is, is you make your run, right? In this case, you make this big, strong run, and then you get up here, and then you get a bar that's down. Right? And then what happens the next day, maybe it gets cuts underneath it, and then they shoot it back up because they want to test that high again. That's where you have to start getting more concerned. It's not this first little pullback. I'm just saying, hey, that can happen, and it can happen at any point now. What you're always concerned about is the test of whatever it is. So, you know, if I'm looking at the most stretched index, which is the NDX and the NASDAQ right now, and I see it doing this, and, and maybe tomorrow it trades back down and closes down here somewhere. Should I be overly worried? No, I shouldn't. Should I expect that that could happen? Yeah, I should. As a matter of fact, this could happen down a quarter percent, down a half a percent, while the S&P stretches a little bit more and goes up to reach its target. That's the way the rotation works. That's kind of what you're seeing here. So don't be surprised if those things that are extended try to come back in some. It would be natural. It would be normal. It would be what it should do uh, rather than continuing higher each and every day. Let's look at some of the sectors here. I just showed you the socks, how it pushed up. We had the IBB pushing up yesterday and then it got that failure reversal, right? A little doji at the top. Today we came off with a little bit of volume. This looks like it's going to try to come back. I mean, this had a great run too. If you count the days here and the points, it was a great run up. You got a swing point high you broke over, hasn't tested it. I wouldn't be surprised to see it come back in to that zone and test it. That's typically what happens, and it usually happens within six bars. And given today's trade, it looks like it's going to try to happen. If we look elsewhere, uh, IYT stretching on up, it's over the swing point high. It's going to get a trend transition tonight. We saw the uh, ITB just take off. I was talking about it this morning with members, telling them this is, you know, is setting up this way. You can see a pre-market, and uh, got the, got the sky sky high move. This and as I was telling members this mark this morning, this looked like it was going to break. You know, it already broken actually. It looked like it was going to take off, and then earnings hit. Right, these are all earnings bars. In, we're in the, the sector itself, but these were individual like uh, 
uh, Ryland and some of the others came out and just got crushed. And then what does it do? It just climbs, climbs, climbs all the way back up, consolidates, and now wants to do it again. Go figure, right? That's that's a tough market to, you know, if you were in here somewhere on the breakout, that was a tough market to stay with. I, I applaud you if you were able to. Uh, I actually was in there. We took a small loss and got out. Uh, because I did not believe it would go to new highs, but it does, and sometimes that's the way it works. Socks, I said we looked at, so let's look at some of the others. XLB stretching up. This also pretty stretched at this point, and and I'll show you on this chart, but it applies to all the others. Remember, we had multiple swing points on multiple time frames on several of these breakouts. Uh, the XLB was one of them. We also had it on the composite, the NDX, and so forth. When you get a break like that, the, the typical scenario is two to three bars extension. What do we have now? Here's the break, one, two bars extension already. We could get a third bar extension. We could get a third bar, you know, sideways. That's the way it typically works. You can see it's not like people are craw crying to get into this thing, but they sure as heck ain't leaving it either. And so that stretch up, is doing exactly what you would expect, but now you're getting to the point where you've got to start expecting, you know, there's a higher probability that we're going to get some sort of a retrace in here pretty soon. Uh, that's on the XLB. Uh, let's continue on. XLE, I don't think really could get going. It's just uh, hanging there. XLF had a little juice this morning trying to push back up. It's up into the resistance zone again. Uh, I saw, now we had rotation moving to the XLV. We saw it in the XLI as well. The XLI has that same scenario I was just talking about with the multiple time frame breaks. Well, you've got it here, and if you pull across the weekly, you've got it on the weekly as well, that price point there. Two to three bars is what you can expect. We're on bar one, right? You can expect this thing to try to crawl higher. That's what it's going to try to do. So if that happens, that's going to be rotation in the S&P 500. And if you get the XLF coming in, you got that rotation going on, maybe XLK just kind of pauses here, even though it keeps stretching. That would give you the kind of move that you need to get back up to the highs, or actually those targets. XLP going for the highs, making its little stretch. Uh, it's been doing some ABCs on the way up. Let me see what that number is while I'm here. 47.68. Uh, that's about a buck 80 onto that. Case you about 49.50.30 or so. And that top is 50.22. So it looks like it's going to test it. XLU, I don't think it did much today. Up a little bit more. XLV was getting a stretch. Had a pause today, but uh, it looks like it's going to try to stretch some more. Let me see. Did that close? Did that test that low? Uh, 72.16, yeah, by a penny. So you go under, back over, less volume. That thing's going to try to run right back up and test the top. And XLY has been pretty stretched and stretches more. So I would expect the stretch sectors to start, you know, calming down, so to speak. And then those sectors that have been pushing... Um, or, or you know the last couple days to continue that push that rotation and that's how this market if it's market's going to continue to crawl higher that's how it's probably going to do it I was telling you that last week is starting to, to uh, actually uh, turn out that way let's look at the ox market see if there's anything there that's useful and let's just take a quick glance at some things we don't get a chance usually EEM's per perking up. That's kind of nice. Big spike up on volume today. Going to go test that high. So emerging markets. Let's see what the currencies are doing. So here's the yen. Yen is down and then reverses. And let's see about the euro. And these are both consolidation ranges. And the euro is doing the same thing. How about the continuous commodity index? Still going to have to make another bottom. Uh, out of curiosity, let's see what junk bonds look like. They're climbing up. Everybody's happy. Same thing here in investment grade bonds. And as I talked about earlier, the TLT got its nice spike up today. 
So that's coming back into this bar, that low 130.19. And we got the 129.79. So that should test into it tomorrow. That's where that resistance zone sits. Uh, that will be an interesting test because as I was talking about last night, you know, if you can't get over this area, then you're setting up a larger ABCD structure to the downside. And actually, let me take that back because now that I look at it, I'd have to draw it slightly different. And that is, is that you have one already in effect, right, from there. And this is trying to come back up and invalidate it or at least bring it up higher. So tomorrow will be a good test on the bonds. And let's see what the oil did today. Oh, this is interesting. So oil's down to, I still couldn't break it, 1802. That big number is 1795. So oil looks like it may try to test again tomorrow. And the dollar, of course, given what we saw over there, the dollar's still hanging in the range. So nothing happening. So all that looks nice and normal. And let's take a quick look and see what the world markets did today. And if we glance over at these, so the all ordinaries still hanging at the highs. Uh, Brazil we saw trying to push up and it did. So Brazil is actually going to start, and that's probably why the EEM started to move. Let's look at the French CAC, new highs, and let's see the FTSE new highs and the DAX I would assume new highs as well and they are and that's uh, you know what you have here and, and actually it probably is easier to look at it on a weekly so let's pull the weekly over you know what you have here is you have QE <laughs> and we've seen this in Japan we saw it in the US right QE has a way of changing everything and so if we draw this ABCD structure that looks like it's almost done on the DAX. Let me do the numbers here. And, and this is a result of QE. So 83.55. 83.55. So it's 1,740 points. God, big number. 1,740. That's 10, 9. That's... Uh, yeah, it's already over it. It's already finished. Okay, so if I pull the monthly over, let's look at this one. And the monthly goes from here, 7655. So that's um, 3... 350 is that the right 7655 that's 300 right 7655 that top is yeah 3 that takes it to 125 and we're at 112 so 1300 more so big numbers I, I you know it's at a point where it should take a break whether it will or not, I have no idea because it's already consolidated here. So it could, it actually, it's got a small ABCD up inside, 10, 10, 6 to 11. So that's about 500 onto this one, gets you about 12.65, and we're at 12.2. So it's getting, getting pretty close, it looks like. So anyway, the, the, the point is, is they keep pushing higher, they're not stopping. Let's look at Taiwan. Taiwan takes off. They're back from uh, their holidays. Nice big spike up on Taiwan. And that one's breaking out over the weeklies finally. So you're getting over the weeklies here. If it holds up there, that will be a breakout on multiple time frames. And the Japanese market just keeps climbing. Uh, just tremendous run again. And this one looks like it's about done. So if I do the numbers here, 16 six roughly to that's about 1240 that's nine twelve that'd be eighteen six eighteen sixty seven eighteen six so about fifty more points so maybe they do that tonight so that one's about uh, where it wants to go so that's that 
tends to underscore exactly what I was just talking about on our indexes, and that is is that you know we're we're starting to get close enough to these projection points where um, you know you can see some sort of a pullback here at any point. Uh, before we talk about that more and go to the final thoughts, let's take a look at uh, the viewer questions that are out there. And in case you're not aware, you know, you can ask questions of me. I'd be more than happy to try to answer your questions, your thoughts. Uh, if you pop into the TA Today site, it's pretty easy. Just come here to Neo TA TV, click on it, scroll down. There's a couple of uh, directions here. You can send email or you can uh, text either one. So uh, those avenues are available to you. Tonight's question has to do with Chris, uh, which is uh, Curious Inc., and they had this huge run out. This is a biotech company. Now, I've, I've written about this in my books. I think I talked about this just maybe a day or two ago on the show. And that is, is that usually when you see, you know, a tremendous run, which this has been, you, you can see that there was a lot of damage done in this stock because all of these swing points were taken out. And they were taken out on volume all the way up. I mean, just look at all of them, right? That, that, that tells you over here somewhere there was a lot of down. You know, this, this thing went down for a long time. And so now it makes a huge run back up. And what does it do at the very top? Spikes with volume. Okay, so when you see that, that usually says, hey, this thing is going to be in a range trade for a while. And for a while, I'm talking about on this time frame. Now, if you spike on your longer term time frames, then you have the same condition there. So if I pull over the weekly, do we have a spike? Well, yeah, we do. We actually have the spike at the highs, right? And now we're coming off of that. And that high took us right back to the previous high. It's, it's crazy how this stuff works. But it's going to be even more crazy when you see the next chart. And that is if I pull over the monthly chart, Look at where that spike took it. You got up to, what was that, 350? Oh, what was the big spike down back here? 335. So you spike over the big downdraft, right? That downdraft, you go back up, you come all the way back down, you test the lows, right? And then you make this huge run again. Well, if you haven't figured it out, this is a very volatile stock. So you just went in two months' time from a buck to 350. Well, that's that's a long way, and that's a very fast move. So, you know, given that large spike up and the way this chart looks, and the fact that, you know, what drove this today really was, or what, not so much today, but what drove this thing up really probably was the earnings. Earnings came out after the bell, actually. I didn't look to see how this traded after the bell. It's a small stock, so I doubt it traded much at all. But I believe there's a fairly high short interest in this. I guess I could check that right quick. Um, and if, if so, you know, then a lot of this could be short covering with the spike at the top. Let me pull up the trading queue right quick. So let me, let me pull this over. We'll grab the trading queue real quick here. So let's grab that. And let's see what kind of short interest we have on this guy. CRS. And pull it down. No, no, it's not. I was thinking it was, but it's not. So it really wasn't short interest that drove it. Institutions 52. So these guys lose money, right? So this is a bet on the future. That's what this is, right? And you know they don't—they don't make anything basically. They're—they're a—they're a loss. So I, when I look at the earnings after the bell, they reported a loss 5.7 million, uh, which is seven cents a share. Uh, the estimate was to lose eight cents a share. Uh, revenue was two million. Uh, they expected 2.2, .2, so they missed the revenue number. And 
the loss widened to eighteen point seven million twenty two cents per share for the year. So we'll see how they trade tomorrow. So the question was is you know is this a buy? I what I would tell you is that more than likely no. And the reason for it is you've got those spikes on both the weekly and the daily. That tells me this is probably going to be some sort of a range. So we're going to have to see you know where is the bottom of the range? How deep is it? If I pull back over that weekly chart right it could easily come back to this area all the way back down to this bottom and that low is 215 and you're trading at 270 so you could get another 60 cents down on a 270 number that's that's a pretty big drop so I, I would uh, this is not a stock I'd be playing with right now see how it trades right I mean, it would be totally different if this stock trades back up tomorrow, gets over this high, and stays over. Then it would be a different picture. But right now, you got to wait and see what the range ends up being. Okay, well, let's get back and consider our uh, final thoughts. So if we think about the market, and we think about you know where we've been and how we got there and we pull over the weekly chart to do that and I'm using the NASDAQ because I think the NASDAQ gives us a better flavor of um, you know what has happened here and what is happening we have a couple big things that are going on one is if you remember back in October we had a big push down and then it just barreled straight out of there like it's so used to doing made new highs we got a setback and a series of setbacks and we we essentially built out a range on the Nasdaq and that range really the the larger range is from you know the top to the bottom high to low and then inside of it there was a, a smaller range on the Nasdaq it wasn't that small in the S&P it was more pronounced if you take that smaller range and you expand it and you say give me something about equidistance you can see that you know there's still room to go. We're about you know 60% of the way to wherever that target is. It doesn't have to get there. Those are projections. But as it climbs higher, the odds increase that you know it will eventually make it up there. But what we have now is we actually have a breakout on a weekly time frame that says at some point this is going to come back retest and try to regenerate higher and that's going to be the key test when it happens when is that going to take place you never know is it is it going to be after six bars or is it going to be before we know the probabilities favor it within six bars and we know that if it is within six bars it typically makes it down towards the bottom end of that that uh, swing point high that is testing 47.57 is that low we're sitting at 49 so you're talking about you know 200 points you know 200 points is a long way and so you know some sort of a setback like that would feel just like October again almost it's not the end of the world and the point of going over this is that if we see this come back that deep what is it doing well in this particular scenario it would just be setting up potentially the ABCD to take it up to that target. So recognize that it's not a bad thing for a market to pull back. It's not a bad thing for the market to just keep going. If you pull back and you hold and project forward, it allows that, that continuation, if you will, in a more ordin ordinary manner, right? An orderly manner and this thing can continue to push and push and push and that's what it's been doing for years if it just goes straight up though the odds are it's going to come back deeper because there's just nothing underneath it when it does that and so you actually you know if you're really bullish especially in a market that's been up this long this far I mean look at this run you don't want it to just keep skyrocketing you want it to pause at points you know you need pauses right to build up these big moves 
you need these pauses to potentially build up a big move. So maybe we get the big move now. Or maybe now as we're getting later and later in the stages, it's just going to be pauses all the way up. You know, you spike up, you come back, you pause, you spike up, you come back, you pause. I mean, that may be the way this plays out. Overall, there's nothing wrong with this market. I mean, the market's doing great. It's doing everything you wanted it to do after this big consolidation over about a two and a half month period. Everything you want is happening here. This big range out, the range breakout is now projecting up, right? It's about two thirds of the way there. Yeah, it can get there and it may just keep going there. I would expect some sort of consolidation in this and the index itself and then potentially that push on up to finish off the targets. That's uh, tonight's wrap. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you. And until tomorrow, we'll leave it at that. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Have a great one. I'll see you next time.